Okay, item number one, to dispense with reading the minutes of the regular meeting dated March 8, 2023, and approve them as distributed and printed. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Cantola Mesa. Yes. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. Frenchko. No. Item number two, to approve the bills. Motion to approve the bills. Second. Mr. Cantola Mesa. Yes. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. Frenchko. Yes. Item number three, to authorize a member of the Board of Trumbull County Commissioners to sign countersign on behalf of the Trumbull County Department of Job and Family Services, the contracts uh, listed uh, March 8, 2023. The contracts create 16 training opportunities and 10 job opportunities at a total cost of $165,137.58. Uh, motion to approve. Second. Mr. Cancel Mesa. Yes. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. Frenchko. Because none of us were provided a copy of the contracts to review. No. Never excuse me. Contracts associated with okay. external action. Thank you. Item number four to award all bids submitted for the purchase of asphalt concrete and asphalt emulsion CMS. 2S for the use by Trumbull County Engineer for the period of April 1st, 2023 through March 31st, 2024, and enter into contract with each company listed for all the materials on which the companies bid, and they were Tri-County Asphalt Materials, Marzane Incorporated, a Stone Co. Incorporated that's doing business as Allied Corporation. A motion to approve. Thank you. Second. Okay. Well. Mr. Cancel Mesa. Yes. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. Frenchko. Yes. Item number five, to award all bids submitted for the purchase of bituminous materials for the use by the Trumbull County Engineer for the period of April 1st, 2023 through March 31st, 2024, and enter into a contract with each company listed, and that is Suit Coat Corporation, Unique Paving Materials Corporation, Russell Standard Corporation, and Geography Highway Company, a motion to approve. Second. Mr. Cancel Mesa. Yes. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. Frenchko. Yes. Item number six to concur with the Trumbull County Engineer to grant the special annual supplier fleet permits that is Clay Trucking Incorporated, Ronyak Brothers Paving, Gibbs Construction Incorporated. A motion to approve. Second. Mr. Cancel Mesa. Yes. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. Frenchko. Yes. Item number seven to concur with the Trumbull County Engineer to grant the right of way permits requested by the companies listed that's Dominion East Ohio, People's Management LLP, and Ashley Hasenauer. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Cancel Mesa. Yes. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. Frenchko. Yes. Item number eight, to concur with the Trumbull County Engineer to grant a special hauling permit to haul steel coils. And this is with Jaro Transportation Services Incorporated. Motion to approve. Second. Uh, Mr. Cancel Mesa. Yes. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. Frenchko. Yes. Item number nine, to concur with the Trumbull County Engineer to grant a quarterly operator a fleet permit uh, to travel upon uh, Load posted uh, Trumbull County roadways, and that is H and K logging and lumber. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Cancel Mesa. Yes. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. Frenchko. Yes. Item number 10 to acknowledge receipt of the proposal of the TRU Cemetery Bridge, Newton Township, uh, which consists of the rehabilitation of the historic pedestrian bridge, which spans the West Branch of the Mahoning River and connects Newton Township's East and West Cemeteries and to authorize the clerk of the Board of Trumbull County Commissioners to re-advertise for sealed bids for the TRU Cemetery Bridge project. As no bids were received for said project that was previously advertised on the agenda, dated February 1st, 2023, Journal Volume 156, page 25433. Motion to approve. <clears throat> Second. Mr. Keith Mesa. Yes. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. Frenchko. Yes. Item number 11, to acknowledge and approve a memorandum of understanding and additional conditions that will become part of said MOU 
by and among the Board of Trumbull County Commissioners, the Trumbull County Engineer, and the South Paimatumi Township are related to the Brockway Sharon Road Improvements Project located in Hartford Township, Trumbull County, Ohio, and South Paimatumi Township, Mercer County, Pennsylvania. The western half of Brockway Sharon Road is maintained by Trumbull County, and the eastern half of Brockway Sharon Road is maintained by South Paimatumi Township. Uh, note ORC section 555.81 states that the Board of Commissioners are required to be a party to improvements made to state line roads. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Discussion. I just wanted to um, point out that the memorandum of understanding has already been approved by our prosecutor's office and thank the uh, highway engineer for sending us the verification so that we could vote on it knowing that it's already been approved. <coughs> Mr. Cantalamesa? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Ms. Frenchco? Yes. Item number 12, to approve the personnel action for employment of Mr. Robert Gilmer for the position of custodian with the Trumbull County Sanitary Engineers Department, effective April 3rd, 2023, pay range three, zero years, that's $14.10, um, pursuant to an authorized job posting. Um, and this uh, action is for recommendation. Uh, oh my God. Department, <laughs> Thank you. Engineers Department. Uh, motion to approve. Second. Mr. Cantola Mesa. Yes. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. Funchko. Um, I just wanted to mention something about this first. Um, I would like to see emails sent out to the applicants as well because what I saw was that they reached out to call people and didn't get called back. So because of that, some of them weren't able to be interviewed. And I think it's um, a, a good practice to make sure you're interviewing them or you're sending an email too if you're requesting an interview so that you have some verification that you actually reached out. Mr. Cancel Mesa? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Ms. Frenchko? Yes. Um, item number 13 to approve the personnel action for the employment of Callie Beach as the telecommunicator with the Trumbull County 911 Center. Effective March 19, 2023, Ms. Beach will be paid the rate of $17.02 per hour and serve a 180-day probationary period. Motion to approve. Second. Um, discussion, I just wanted to say that the ranking tool is incredibly subjective uh, and, and we should have ranking tools for hiring that are objective so that they can't be manipulated for certain people um, and also i didn't receive a copy of the rubric associated with this so, and that's to patty goldner hopefully she's listening and will address those things or work with um, human resources because we have very splintered hiring processes in the county we've got um, 911 doing their own thing, sanitary engineers, uh, jobs and family services, uh, and it also begs the question, if we're going to have decentralized hiring, do we really need as much staff um, over in HR? But nonetheless, I think it's important that we have some centralized processes countywide. Mr. Cantona Mesa? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Ms. Frenchco? Yes. Item number 14, to accept the resignation of Mr. Charles Miller of the Trumbull County Flesh Plain Variance Board. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Cantona Mesa? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Ms. Frenchco? Yes. Item number 15, to appoint the individuals listed as members of the Trumbull County Flood Plain Variance Board for three-year terms commencing April 1st, 2023 through March 31st, 2026. Um, note, two vacancies uh, needed to fill due to the resignation of Mr. Charles Miller and the untimely passing of Mr. Thomas Glad. And those new members will be Tony Beats and Mr. John E. Hickey. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Cancela Mesa. <laughs> Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Ms. Frenchco? Yes. Item number 16, to authorize the Trumbull County Planning Commission to prepare and submit a request for funding 
through the FY24 uh, CDS appropriation process for the construction of the Larchmont Sanitary Sewer Extension Project and authorize the Board of Trumbull County Commissioners to execute a letter of support for the same. The proposed project consists of extending a 36-inch sanitary sewer line northerly along Larchmont Avenue across the Warren Outer Belt in order to provide sanitary sewer service to dozens of existing businesses and provide development opportunities for underutilized land in Trumbull County and authorize the Board of Trumbull County Commissioners to execute a letter of support for additional appropriation requests that are being submitted by other entities that include but are not limited to economic development and the sustainability of the Youngstown Air Reserve Station. Copies of these letters of support will be provided to the commissioners on or before other Wednesday meeting. The request for approving letters of support is necessary due to the pending deadline for the appropriation request of March 19, 2023. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Cantola Mesa. Yes. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. French Co. Yes. Item number 17 to establish the creation of the commissioner's grant fund known as Fund 101, for use by the Trumbull County Board of Trumbull County Commissioners. The fund is being created to account for monies in the amount of $9,175 that was awarded to the Trumbull County Agriculture and Family Education Center for repairs to steps in an observation deck. The grant was obtained through Senator Sandra O'Brien, uh, HB 687, and the Ohio Department of Agricultural Agriculture. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Cancel Mesa. Yes. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. French Co. Yes. Item number 18 to adopt the annual appropriation resolution to provide for the current expenses and other expenditures of Trumbull County during the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2023, for the general fund 001 and all other funds of Trumbull County. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Cancel. Discussion. I just wanted uh, to make sure it's in the record that uh, the Board of Commissioners did not contribute in one way towards developing the budget, though the developing the budget is the statutory responsibility of the Board of Commissioners. In Trumbull County, it's been past practice to give that duty to the auditor. That's not the auditor's statutory duty. Could you imagine if in the state of Ohio, the auditor prepared the budget for the legislature. That's how backwards this is. And it's been going on and going on. Um, we had no discussion that led to any decision making relative to this budget. It's not done in any other county by another elected official for whom it's not their statutory duty. I believe this needs to change. <clears throat> Mr. Cancel Mesa? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Ms. French Co? No. Item number 19 to record onto the journal for record purposes the allocations as listed from the 2023 sales tax revenues in the general fund 001. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Cancel Mesa? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Ms. French Co? Because the Board of Commissioners has received no verification that this is accurate, and it was just told to the other commissioners Monday, and I received an unsigned paper uh, stating that this is what it was without signatures or meeting minutes, I, I, I would have to vote no. We should, if you want to trust, trust, but at least verify. Okay, these certificates, as I've stated, cannot be signed until the budget is passed. I gave uh, some documents and Ms. Santangelo said she would be happy to provide those to the board. Um, I know the auditor's office will be, had to change their schedule to work on the budget for the rest of the week, but they will provide these uh, to the board for you. Minutes as well. Minutes, ma'am, when I have an extra second. I work 16 hours this weekend, including Sunday and Saturday and Friday night. Oh, I, I will get you the minutes. The minutes from this, this, the minutes from the, the, the minutes from this meeting have not been provided to anyone to see even what occurred, but yet we're expected to vote on something. It's 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 a problem. So I, I, I don't agree. We're, we're, so we're here. We're here yeah. not 
to give excuses. And again, I just want to say the, the clerk should not be inserting herself into the conversation of the board. Thank you. We, we did have a meeting, a budget meeting on Monday during the general meeting, and we had uh, Martha Yoder, our new auditor, and we had Ms. Santangelo there that went over any questions and all questions that we had regarding this stuff and provided any paperwork that we requested at that meeting. And once again, I would advise it would have been nice for you to be a part of it to see it as the 22 other people in the room that day saw it. Um, Denny, please. <laughs> the, the meeting Tuesday was pushed back to Monday to accommodate one commissioner's schedule. On top of that, there's no surveillance in that office where anything at the commissioner, I'm sorry, at the planning commission meeting. After what happened last week with our thug sheriff um, taking my right. my phone, I'm when not we're, I'm not going to go anywhere. That, no, it's 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 not appropriate uh, for anyone to interfere with a public meeting, and I, I believe we need to make sure that we have video surveillance that in every building where there's a public meeting as a result of what happened over there last week. And, and nothing, I, I did listen to the meeting, and there was nothing, you didn't engage in the conversation, Mr. Malloy, you you just said that you were trusting what they were telling you. If there, you're just going to trust what you're telling There was a lot of information that was passed back and forth no, in that I, meeting. No, I, I heard it. And if you had something you wanted to request, I, I heard it, and I've it. also requested meetings since last year, uh, since I started actually to have more budget hearings and budget meetings so that the public could be aware of what's going on because the commissioners don't participate at all. What I did hear yesterday what from the meeting on Monday was that uh, an acknowledgement that the people in the auditor's office allow, all, allow the departments to go into the red and fix it at the end of the year. That's not budgeting. Item number 20, we did vote on. Just wanted to make sure we voted on number 19. It's very important. So um, I, I'm going to call the roll again. Commissioner Cancel Mesa? Yes. Commissioner Malloy? Yes. And Commissioner French Co? No. Thank you. Item number 20, to adopt a resolution that application be made as provided in the Ohio Revised Code sections 5705.15 and 5705.16 to transfer the sum of $331,636 from the Trumbull County Children's Services Board Fund number 012 to the Child Assault Prosecution Unit uh, within the Trumbull County Prosecutor's Office designated as Prosecutor State Grant Fund number 104 and that the Trumbull County Prosecutor and the Clerk of the Board of Commissioners be and are hereby authorized to take all actions necessary to effectuate this resolution and to acknowledge the memorandum of understanding 2023 between the Trumbull County Children's Services Board and the Trumbull County Prosecutor's Office for 2023 funding for the Child Assault Prosecution, Prosecution Unit. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Cantor Lisa. Yes. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. French Co. Yes. Item number 21 to authorize payment of $51,594.99 to the Eastgate Regional Council of Governments. Uh, dues for the calendar year 2023. Local dues are required to match federal and state funds at various ratios for the Eastgate Regional Council of Governments. Uh, different funding programs, and it will be broke down for the commissioners, the county engineer, and the sanitary engineer, and they each will pay $17,000. $198.33. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Cancel Mesa. Yes. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. Frenchco. Yes. Item number 22 is to authorize the liquor permit. It's a transfer and it's from uh, Dale um, Sonsky and it's doing business as Candy Wood, Cellar and Patio, and it's going to see W Cellar LLC doing business as Candy Wood Cellar. Motion to approve. Second. Cancel Mesa? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Ms. French Co? Yes. Item number 22 to concur with the Trumbull County 911 Center to utilize services for conducting employment background checks between Trumbull County 911 
and Armor Risk Management, LLC. Um, Trumbull County 911 will pay Armor Risk Management $700 <clears throat> each for the first five uh, dispatcher background investigations, totaling $3,500. Any additional dispatcher background investigations will be the normal price of $750 each for the remainder of 2023 calendar year. Normally, these investigations take between seven and 10 working days to complete. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Discussion. I, I didn't receive a copy of any type of request for qualifications or request for quotes about this. I don't remember the board uh, authorizing uh, this activity to go out and to request these things for these services. I also want to point out that this is a department where there is extremely high turnover. So $750 associated with every uh, every applicant, I think, is uh, is high. I'm looking at what I was provided, and even what I was provided is not standard. Whenever we have a request for qualifications, a request for quotes, or RFP, uh, we usually get uh, some type of a, a, a spreadsheet that shows who is the best and why. On top of that, we have, uh, again, splintered hiring practices uh, in which things could be centralized. If we have a obscenely high paid HR interim director over there who claims to have 45 years of experience, I'm wondering why he hasn't assisted in this and why we can't have other uh, HR people centrally located helping to vet all candidates for jobs across the county rather than spending additional money in a department that regularly is over budget and spending at an unsustainable rate. Mr. Cantola Mesa? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Ms. French Co? No. <laughs> item number 24 to rescind the agenda item uh, dated March 1st, 2023, volume 156, page 25501 approving the personnel action for the employment of Ms. Alexandra Devengency Bush to the position of Human Resources Director with the Trumbull County Human Resources Department, effective Monday, March 20th, 2023. Motion to rescind the agenda item dated March 1st, 2023, approving the personnel action for the employment of Alexandra DeVincenzi Bush to the position of Human Resources Director. Uh, she will be paid at a rate uh, that's not appropriate to her years of experience. And the candidate did not meet the minimum qualifications for the job posting. And well, there is no discussion with this question, Read it as, I read it as, I read it as, I'm reading, I'm reading, I'm reading, I'm no reading the, a note that I provided and every other item has a special note. Uh, if you reduce the qualifications for employment and then hire someone with, if you don't reduce this is discussion. No, 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 you're just this trying to discussion. throw me off of what I'm saying and it's, it, and it's a, Go ahead. Yeah. So, so the what I was saying is uh, the candidate did not meet minimum qualifications for the job description. Therefore, it should be if they want that the board intends to hire someone who doesn't meet the job description. But you're going into discussion and it is not written they, on the agenda. Then they should. That's not allowable by Robert's orders. You're going into discussion. That's not true. Your uh, going discussion no, is not uh, on the agenda item. No, it's a special note. Every other agenda item that has a note. That note is not on here. I don't see that note written anywhere on here. It doesn't matter. I'm reading it. You make it up it. as you go. No, I'm reading it. I'm watching you write it as you go. No, I'm reading my special note. <laughs> okay. The, Move the, forward. No. Is there a no, second? No, no. For opening, lack of a second, the motion the, dies. No, you're Move opening on the for county up for liability by not... If you're going to allow someone a job that's not qualified, then you're then you're putting please. yourself at risk because other people who who would be qualified with a lower qualifications were were not applicants. Item number twenty five to approve the posting and national advertising for the position of Trumbull County Human Resources Director. I'd like to make a motion to table this because I think that we need to look at restructuring. Motion will die for lack of a second. Okay. 
for the original motion. Is there a motion on the table for number 25? Do you have a strike number 25 from the agenda? No, it's the motion dies for lack of a second. There was no. Exactly. The motion died for lack of a oh, first. Okay. Well, for lack of a first, but it's not the striking it from the agenda. It's, it, it has to exist. Good Clerk, morning, I just please. want you to know that that has to exist as a record. Don't strike it from the agenda or you'll be violating uh, open records. Item number 26, to adopt a resolution authorizing expenditures for responding to or mitigating the public health emergency from the American Rescue Plan Act funds. This is going to support Dr. Metal Roofing and Construction, whereas the county has received a distribution of monies, the ARPA funds, from the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021, whereas Congress passed the act effective uh, March 11, 2021, and this will support the replacement of the annex of building roof at the fair in the amount of $16,573.10. Motion to approve. Second. Uh, discussion. This, it's important. This is an extremely important project. It was going to get delayed to the point where it wasn't going to get on or done by the time of the fair. Um, I worked with the Tanya to make sure that we had the proper language last week so that we can get it done immediately. Uh, the problem that I have with this, though I'm, I'm still voting for it, is that we, we need to make sure that we're having a consistent request for quotes process in the county. Uh, I've been asking for this to happen, and it's to no avail, you know. We have, um, when we get quotes and you pick up the phone and you call them, and only one person responds, it looks funny. So to have an actual request for the quotes with uh, Trumbull County's title on the front saying what you want, which is that all the costs need to be itemized, which is protects you from audit, especially as it relates to ARPA, because there are certain rules that apply to that. I think it's important at this point that the board instruct all of our staff and, and maintenance to use something in writing when they're requesting quotes rather than picking up the phone and calling. On this, in this particular case, we do have three, but sometimes we have less than that, and it's a good practice. Ba uh, Baker, Dublikar, Beck, Wiley, and Matthews actually offered to do a, a standard request for quotes saying what we need. I think that that's a good idea to have them do that, so whoever it is, if it's maintenance or uh, building department, they're able to plug in what they're requesting and make sure they're doing it in a um, audit proof fashion. Would, would the board agree to have a proper request for quotes? Because there was no written request. It also promotes transparently transparency to show that everyone was asked the same thing and told the same thing. There were three quotes given. And exactly. And, that. and they're not, yes, and they're not exact. Sometimes they come in not exactly the same. That's and your if you opinion. look at, That's your opinion. it's not an opinion. Yes, it is. <laughs> if you come to the workshop and understand it's, it. No, I, under I understand. I, I, I actually oversaw construction projects. I, this is, was something that I did as a HUD consultant. So, so. Now you're a construction No, uh, no I actually was our installer, construction manager, lawyer, engineer. Let's move on, please. HUD 203 cons consultant. Item number 26, would you Mr. Chancellor Mesa? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Ms. French Cove? Yes. Item number 27. Item number 26 supports this agenda item, which is to accept an award of proposal submitted by DR Metal Roofing and Construction for the replacement of the Trumbull County Fairground and its building roof in the amount not to exceed $16,573.10. The other proposals that were submitted were Dan Faith Construction, and they came in at $17,600. GC Metal Sales, $18,831.25. Dave Wiltrout, Roofing Incorporated, $20,700. Motion to approve. Yeah. 
Second. And discussion. Do you have a, a, a problem if women have construction or maintenance experience that you don't mark? One quarter. No, I just, I just wonder. Just, you were just insult, you were just insulting me about being a HUD two or three K consultant, and, and I don't know if you know what that is. Please do we move on. Okay. Mr. Cancel Mesa. Yes. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. French Ho. Yes. Item number 28 to authorize payment of $380 as a settlement in the case of Philip Evans versus Trumbull County Sheriff's Department, Trumbull County Court of Common Pleas, case number 2022-CV-1034. Motion to approve. Second. Uh, Mr. Cancel Mesa. Yes. Mr. Malloy. Yes. Ms. French Ho. Yes. Okay, that concludes our agenda items. We'll open up the floor for comments from board. Just, just really quickly, I'm sorry, Sharon, then you can go. Um, just for the record of clarification, um, there are certain agenda items that we vote on that we have discussion on. Um, we discussed them, just so everyone knows, in a public work session. We did that yesterday ad nauseum. We did it for hours. A lot of Monday. people were there. I'm sorry, Monday. Um, my days are running together, but we do that uh, thoroughly. And um, if I'm not correcting or going into different things, it's because I, I want to ex expedite this meeting and get through it. Um, but I am available to explain my position to the press or anyone else uh, that would like to hear it. So for purposes of getting through this meeting, though, um, you know, I wasn't going to sit there and, and argue. So, but I have there are differences of opinion for sure. Okay, I've got an issue too. Okay. We'll bring up if we could. Um, I got a complaint, or I shouldn't say a complaint. I got an inquiry from our 911 department twice. Um, the Commissioner French had called on a recorded line to inquire about an occurrence that happened at her residence, and she wanted to know who the dispatcher was that leaked it to the media that Point. this occurred at your residence. Point of order, really. You're on this a 911 really tape. To... This is this is pertinent. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel that by her calling there and interfering in the investigation, it violates ethics. That if it's, she's inquiring about a crime that occurred at her house that she was allegedly accused of, she called 911 oh to God. see who leaked it to the media. I talked to the media afterward, uh, found out where the source was, which was not 911. And at the same time, she called again, or she sent an email again yesterday asking about the status of the investigation that she requested from 911. There is a recorded 911 tape of her calling on that day. Instead of calling the supervisor not, on her phone number or cell number, she called 911 to talk to the supervisor. For three and a half minutes, she, she tied up a 911 emergency line while she waited to get to a supervisor to discuss the incident that happened at her house. After she got the supervisor, she then talked to him about the incident. And in her statement, she said, if there was a leak from 911 regarding this, we just fired somebody for this. I want to know who did this. I have a written statement from the assistant at 911. I have a copy of the recorded tape available for the media if you want it. And I would like to ask Mara at a time. I talked to the prosecutors about this, the sheriff and the police chief uh, who handled the call at the residence. And uh, I think we need to ask the state attorney general or the special prosecutor to investigate this because at the least, I think this is highly unethical to involve yourself in the crime you've been committed of no. or accused of being committed of committing. No, this is unbelievable. And, and the prosecutor said they can't handle it themselves because they represent all three of us as a board, but they advise the same thing. We may want to ask the state to look into this on their own and provide any documentation of what we have. If there's no, I, I'll, I'll respond to that, Jenny. There is our county policy, which you haven't read yet, says that you're not allowed to share anything with anyone unless it's been done through public records request if you're an employee of the county. Where does that say in the policy exactly? You haven't read it either, Mara? Where, where, did, where is that language exactly in the policy? Because that's not it, in there. This is all public records, Commissioner. This is all public records. It actually is in that. And, Kat, and the employee who was disciplined, I think her file might be here, but that was one of the reasons that was cited was for sharing something that was not public, public record requested. So it doesn't matter if it was requested, you can share a public record. No, that was no, interfering the with the crime. No, the same the thing that you were being alleged to be accused of here, of interfering with true. the crime oh, that goodness. you were accused of committing, 
and you were heading it off in no, the past we, by interfering yourself no, as your title false. county commissioner you, you are to get to find out, out who was the one that you're out of line for discussing this no it's not about it's, it's not all about, public it's not about as soon as the, they make the 911 call and the 911 recorded line it's, it's public not about information. The, it's not about the media the media did request something but it was leaked but on top of that it's things are being sent to the organization that's that is positioned to try to remove me from office. I mean, when you've got 911 employees sharing things with a commissioner, all due respect, the police it's, report it's was online a day before you called 911 on a Friday. It's this was alleged to have occurred on Wednesday, and it was already on media, social media, on Thursday. When mm -hmm. you called on Friday to inquire, when Stan Boney had inquired uh, with the 911 center, it was already it was already public information all over the world on the oh. World Wide Web for more than 24 hours. Okay. Everybody knew about it. And I just think it's highly unethical for somebody to use their title as commissioner, especially someone that knows 911 is for emergency uses only, to dial 911 no, to I, ask to talk to a supervisor. It's true. I, I called Patty Goldner and she was on vacation. Yeah, so you I, called 911 no, to get a hold of Patty so I, Goldner. She was, I have the tape. I'll release it to the media. I have a copy okay. of the 911 tape. Where you, where they, you said who you were, you were looking for Patty Goldner, okay. you asked if she was still on vacation, you asked for a supervisor These to personal, talk about personal an attacks, in your house. Personal attacks during public meetings are absolutely This not is the only place for. I can address this publicly with Mara to ask if we can go over the prosecutor's head to have someone investigate this. This is highly unethical when you involve yourself in an open investigation. Is there is an open is police personal. investigation of a drug theft at your house. Oh, there's an open investigation. There's, not a, there's no open. There's an open investigation the, the of a 911 call that stemmed from your house and you called 911 to threaten the employees there to, to find out who was the one that told this the media is about it. personal attacks and bullying and has no place in government. This is you, facts. You, ran, is facts you ran on making meetings boring and being professional and bringing professionalism to the county and staying on topic and you've been nothing but continuing the legacy of Frank, even even passing off and using the rubber stamp and, and, so, and your All due respect, Commissioner, if this involved Mr. Candela Mesa, I'll be doing nothing, the same thing. That have nothing to do with county business. I was, I was approached by an employee to you, look into those, to ask, what should I do, Commissioner? Should, I can't give an done. answer to that employee without addressing it in a public, in, public meeting with this the consent a, of the board. A, I'm asking for consent of the board to advise Mr. Laird and Ms. Goldner what to do with this. They feel very uncomfortable with this, being that you were their boss. We talked to the prosecutor's office. They feel very uncomfortable handling this thing. And I am asking I, for the I consent of the board. I understand to, that you guys just had a bad news day. To go day over. Yes, to go over. Yeah, yeah, I understand. You do consent, Mark? Yes. Do we, do we, do we send, a, send the copies of what we have to the Ethics Commission and ask the Please. Attorney General to, to send someone Please. outside of Tromo County to investigate this? Okay. To see if there was anything unethical or illegal about you intervening yourself in a call relating to you at 911. Thank you, Mara, for the uh, second. Okay. And we will provide information over to the prosecutor's office to ask for assistance for them to turn it over to someone outside the county to look into this. So we're not involved, you're not involved, none of us here are involved as to not taint the issue or look like we're impartial. So, you, okay. no anyone one, is anyone delving in tomorrow, you know, to, Deleting his phone records that were public that would that were related to what criminal. That? No, That's, what I'm saying is, we were. You're an elected official. We're not covering up no. for each other up here. Yeah, no, no, you <laughs> if are. If that's what you're saying, yeah, you're 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 I did this, and since you said this, you, I'm going to go after you for this. No, it's seriously, you deleted your phone message. So this is it, what, what happens. Saying, she deflects and she tries to no. make up and shift the blame to somebody else. Bottom no, line is, I, it's, about it's, this it's not. It's not. I've consistent. never deleted one phone message. Yeah, you said your phone is on auto delete, and it's. It auto is after sixty days. It, it auto delete. You said it was after thirty before. You must have changed it to sixty, and you know that as an elected official, you need to make sure that those are maintained. That's the setting that there, came from. I, I'm not entertaining this discussion with you. No. This is but nonsense, no one is, no one is and this is trying to no trying is, to play no some weird invest, political game. No what you've done, Commissioner, that. is borderline criminal and unethical. No, there's no. Yes. Let's stick on topic. Let's say, let's deleting hear that tape. Deleting Let, exculpatory evidence is what your sister-in-law did and it's what you did too. Again.
I, I simply asked and I'm not going to argue with the fool. One of I'm our sorry. employees asked me what to do, and I did my job as commissioner in a public setting by addressing the, the issue. Bias is, the bias the board. is evident. All, all you a see copy, to do Mr. Smith, is try a copy has already me. been given to Ms. Leonard okay. and uh, Mr. Boney. They asked for it two weeks ago. They already have it. And now, if you'd like a copy yourself, I can forward the email to you, and I'll copy the tape and the copy of the email that she sent to Mr. Laird yesterday asking an update on the investigation she requested. Okay. Anyone else in the crowd? Because yes. employees should be investigated when they're doing things contrary to county policy. Correct, and that's exactly what we're doing. Employees or commissioners. Yes. Uh, good morning, commissioners. I am here on behalf of the Massville Historical Society and the vice president. We have applied for a grant um, dated May 22nd, sorry, May 26th, 2022 for $65,000. Our building um, is in some need of handicap health issues. The building was built in 19, I'm sorry, the, the, sorry. <laughs> the uh, Historical Source Society was built or made in 1973. And so I gave everybody a packet, I gave one to Commissioner Prince for this morning, and we are asking that this grant be processed onto the attorney's office. And if you have any questions, there's also some well, we went, we went over this yesterday, or I'm sorry, Monday, um, Sharon, and I, I'm, I'm fully uh, ready to move this on to, the, to, the, to our uh, attorney. I think that um, we went over the benefits of this, and, and a lot of this will fall under Category 1, um, but I think that we need to get a, uh, an attorney's opinion on this. The MESPO um, area is one that's not typically, um, you know, it, it goes on unnoticed sometimes. We want to change that, so this is one way we can do that. We know that you've grown the historical society by leaps and bounds, so uh, I have no problem moving that along to the attorney. I agree. So okay, My, I'd, I'd like to respond. Um, we have dozens of ARP applications that are just sitting that no one has had a public meeting on. I've requested a process when I started, or whenever we, they announced the, the money that we have public meetings and we have everything together so that we can decide at one time, instead of just uh, the, the other two commissioners saying, okay, we're gonna try to push this through, or this through, or this through. I believe that we need to have a, a public meeting with all of the applications, knowing the funding that's left and making decisions on what's going to be funded and what's not so that we don't have applicants waiting for ARPA money. Um, we have a historical society in McDonald that requested, I think, $12,000. And no one, or it was very small ask, but the Board of Commissioners does not have a centralized file of all, everything that's been brought in. So I requested to have at least an Excel spreadsheet put together. We've had that. No. A public no. workshop. I have to right now. Copies of it. No. All. Sorry. Uh, let me. Uh, no. Don't interrupt. No. We, we don't interrupt me. Okay. So uh, what you're looking at is a Munis spreadsheet. The Munis spreadsheet only is a report, and it only shows the ones that have been entered. It doesn't show the status update on them. It doesn't show uh, if they've been applied for on the proper forms. It doesn't show categorically how it's been spent, so that we can see. Category one, two, three, or four. Not, I requested things to help the commissioners make the final decisions on these, and I think the final decisions, now that we have a new board composition, should be done publicly, because I tried to do this at one time before when Frank was here, and he kept saying, no, now that Denny's here, I'd like to ask him if we can have a public meeting with all of the documents to make the final decisions together as a board so that we don't leave communities hanging as to whether or not we're going to fund their projects. We're, we're, we're not leaving communities hanging, number one. We've spent a great deal on a lot of worthwhile projects. We've sent others to the that you voted on, that you've consented on, that we've sent to the attorney. This is a process. It's not just, we're, we're, hey, we're going to put this on the agenda. There's a lot that goes into this with Jim Masaki, no. our attorney. They're, they're you don't deal, you don't deal okay. with Jim we Masaki or the, the attorneys until you've actually looked at all of them together. So we've never had a public meeting where we've looked, where we've looked, we've you, never had a public meeting where we've looked at every single application and said these ones were funded, 
These ones are being are sent for requests of opinion. These ones are still out here. We have people requesting small contributions toward road projects and townships and other projects, and we need to be able to let them know whether or not we're going to fund them. We need to make these final decisions so we're not leaving communities hanging, and we absolutely are because there's not even a follow up once we receive the application. Once we receive the application to the applicant to say, hey, this is on the wrong form. And I know that because we still have some applications that no one was instructed to go through uh, our website to file that application. So we've had people come in with their applications almost leaving the building without, before I said, hey, you have to go through and file it the right way on our website. So we need to have a public meeting, look at all the applications that are left, and make that decision in public instead of, you know, we like this one or we like this one or we're going to push this one through. Commissioner, we, 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 if we look at the workshop last week, I asked Mr. Masaki if the following week, meaning Monday, mm -hmm. we can invite the ARP people that are waiting out there to come and talk about so we can prioritize. We spent at least 45 minutes of our meeting on Monday talking specifically about ARP things. We had 22 people there and I think we had five or six people that gave presentations mm -hmm. on their projects they already submitted. I encourage that every week for them to come in and do that. I would be yeah. more than open to having a meeting just regarding that. I have concerns. We have $15 million supposedly left in the fund. I've publicly stated I'd like to see half of that get out to the townships before our own county agencies absorb and, and hog all the money up. Uh, not that those programs are bad, but I made a commitment. I think we need a commitment to the county to make sure that money gets spread all over the county and we make the right the right choices so nobody gets left behind on that and we do prioritize. So, so that is something if you want a public meeting, I do, call but, it, I'll be but I don't want that until we have the actual Excel spreadsheet that shows the status of everything like I requested from I'm sure, the staff. I'm sure we will have that for the meeting. I know it's online. They showed me where I could that's find it online it, myself. That's not what I'm looking for. And that's not what you need to see to be able to decide either. You're talking about the munis reports that are there, and that doesn't give us everything that we need to know. I mean, it's simple. So we know I, what was no, requested, we know what we spent, and then we know what's left. We can look it up ourselves if we want to. No, I, I asked staff to do something, and I hope it's... Do you want staff done. to do it for you instead of us to do it ourselves? Yes. I'm more than happy we to do it myself. If you want me to give you a copy of it when I'm done, I'm great, but it's, I'm more than happy to do it. There's a copy of the munis report, but that doesn't give us the things that I'm looking for in an Excel spreadsheet. And now that I've gone since February 2nd without a computer, and I know, and I was told that um, Mara had a change of heart on letting me, trading with me. So, sure. I was, I say yes. so, so I don't have Excel. So that's why I'm asking that, I mean, staff should be doing this. That's what we have administrative staff for. Okay, Commissioner Frenchico, I can tell you my experience with the art funding. So we actually submitted the applications off your line, online. I, uh -huh. And then I got a hold of Masaki and actually emailed him everything. He actually did get back to me on mine. I had filled out the wrong application. I filled out the correct application. Thank you. I had been in contact with him several times. Mm -hmm. He told me I need to come to workshop. So I understand what you're saying, but Squeaky will get the attention. And the people out there ask for grant money. They need to spend the hours that I have done for the last six weeks coming to a meeting and learning about it and coming to the workshops and discussing. That it. website wasn't I even up and running until after half of the application, not half of the, there's a dozens of them that came in before that website was up, just with, so you with know. With all due respect, Commissioner, I have no act on that. I can tell you how I was treated with the two applications I put in. Um, I hope you consider our grant. It's a worthy project. Just to know, we do all of the elementary school in Bloomfield, um, Mesco Elementary every year for free. We want to continue to do that. We need handicapped accessible to get those kids upstairs to that museum. The children that are handicapped accessible cannot go upstairs. Mm -hmm. We do our fundraisers. We work very hard. We have a wonderful board to have our, our chair here for the building. And so I think it is moving forward. Yes, there was some confusion, but anytime you start a project, you're going to have some confusion. So if this is a public meeting, I would stress to anybody that has our meeting to go to the workshops. That's where the work, excuse me, I'm not done. That's where the work, that's where the work happens. That's where we figure it all out. I did my own research on ARP. Because if you want something, you gotta dig for it. I felt like we were, we were, we were taken care of. Mr. Masaki got back to me and I enjoyed coming to the workshops and presenting my grants. 
that's all I have to say. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, so I was proposing that we have, there are a lot of people who applied before that website was up that didn't or weren't given the information on how to do that or the proper process and their their uh, applications are just like sitting in limbo without any kind of type of feedback. So, I, so, so that's another reason why we need to have a dedicated meeting for this and st instead of just you know, a couple projects here and there, someone says, hey, come to our workshop. You Schedule know, we, a meeting, we, we'll be we, there. Schedule a meeting, I'll give you a second on the meeting, let's move on. Right. Yeah. Schedule a meeting, we'll be there. Well, again, we make sure that the staff has put together this the information that we need in order to make those final decisions. So as soon as I get that, I intend to schedule a meeting because that also jams up our state legislature and we have, um, we have state representatives who are looking for projects that they can actually present uh, for and other budgets at the state to have alternate funding, but we need to know what we're acting on and what we're not acting on in order to push those things through. So they have ARPA money to spend at the state, but if we don't get the, it together at the county and decide what's being done and what's not, we're not gonna be able to ship those on to our state representatives to try to get more funding back to Trumbull County. I'm sure if you make a meeting and you publicize it, the art people that are interested will attend that meeting. Well, that's what that's what I would like to do, but we need to have our administrative staff do something that I've asked them to do for, for a while. So as soon as that's done, that as soon as I schedule, have, schedule as soon as the meeting, I know that's Commissioner, I'll make sure it's done. Schedule oh, you the will meeting. make sure that's I'll done. I'll do it myself if I have to. Great, thank schedule you. Schedule the meeting. Okay. <laughs> schedule the meeting. You can schedule the meeting without a laptop on your phone if you want to. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. I, I just need I'll, to know. No, there's no, no vote. We, we, there's we no did vote. a consensus okay. of two people to tell Ms. Massard to move on to legal. Thank you. Next. Yes, sir. Good morning. Morning. My name's uh, Porfirio C. Torres III. I'm from South Dakota, Ohio, uh, a.k.a. P.C. Torres. The reason I wanted to say that is because I've got to get a hold of you, uh, commissioners, because, and I want my face to be known because, you know, sometimes it's nice to put a face with a, with a name. Um, the reason I'm here, Trumbull County has a problem with drugs. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make that clear. Trumbull County has a problem with drugs. Um, I'm living it. I'm buried in my nephew's bar. Sorry. Another family member just got out of jail. I don't think he was there long enough, um, but you know they want uh, the room. You know, the, a lot of people, not, not just courts, not just the police, not just you know everyday citizens. They look at drug addicts as losers. You know, it's sad, sad. I'm 31 years clean. You know, I was a drug addict. I was a drug addict. I did some felony things, but guess what? I never got caught. So does that mean me, am I, am I the person to judge somebody? I did the same things they're doing today, okay? I want Trumbull County to take the lead in the country, not just, I don't care where the drugs are coming from, whether they're coming from Mexico or China or wherever, I don't care where they're coming from. They're here. We need something in Trumbull County you know, I'm going to use a quote of uh, Martin Luther King, I had a dream. I had a dream we had a facility here that, you know, the place where drug addicts are not, or, or alcoholics, it's not jail. Jail doesn't rehabilitate you, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I think we need a facility that teaches addicts to um, learn how to live life again, you know? And I, I, I'm not I'm not getting on any political party, but I don't want to hear this no more. I'm, I'm tired of the political parties work together. I'm talking nationwide, not just Trumbull County. I'm to work together for the citizens of Trumbull County. I don't care about what other counties do, you know. So I'm not qualified educationally wise to do it, but I, I'm educate. I, I'm qualified because I'm I, I live the life, and, and I see it every day. And nothing is being done. 
from the, this administration, and I don't mean that in disrespect to the past related uh, administration. Drugs are something that we hide in our families, and uh, I'm not going to hide it in my family. You know what I'm saying? It's like I could only take care of my household. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, uh, meetings, places. People have meetings. They have uh, they have uh, halfway houses. It's still not working. It's, it, it helps some people. You know, you have churches that have meetings. You know, it it's, it helps people, but it doesn't help everyone. But there, there's a way to do it. You know, the only way you can understand it is to live it. And I don't care what kind of education you have. And just you can show me this statistic. I can show you a statistic that that'll counteract that. But that's not what I'm here for. I'm asking you to step up as Trumbull County Commissioners to find out um, what we can do. Let's let's lead the country in this, okay? All right, so that's about all I got to say. And uh, like I said, if I call you or, or email you, please give me the respect to give me a call back and just, you know, say, hey, I heard this, or, you know, I don't know about funding. You know, I work for the city of Warren. I'm, I work for the water department. So I can tell you about some water, okay? That's all I can tell you. But I can tell you about what, what it's like to be a drug addict, a drug dealer, you know, I mean, not a convicted felon, because I never got, I've got I a clean record, but I've done felony things. I'm going to say that again. I just never got caught, you know. So so that doesn't make me any better than the person that's in jail right now. I personally think jail is not the answer for these guys, man. You know, mm -hmm. they need rehab. You know, they need to learn how to live life as as a regular person, you know. I mean, what is a regular person, actually, you know. Um, but... That, that's not the life. And I, I ask you that, uh, you know, I was prophesied five years ago by a, by a preacher. Didn't know me from the man in the moon. He said to me, man, something, something about you has, you know, he goes, you look like a fighter. And I'm thinking to myself, look, I know, smashed or something. I didn't know what he meant, but he goes, he goes no, I don't mean fighting. He goes, something you have to do something with addiction. This guy didn't know me from the man in the moon, but that was five years ago. And I'm, today, 2023, I finally got my head out of my butt and got down here and said, what, where can I, where can I, what can I do? All I can do is ask you to find out something. You, you guys know what, what money comes in through the state, through the mm -hmm. country. You know, we, we have to take some of our money. I'm not saying roads aren't important. I ain't saying infrastructure ain't important. But I'm telling you, what's ruining Trumbull County is drugs, and drug addiction. Yes. Nothing else, okay? So thank you for your time. Well, Mr. Thank Torres, you. Thank, thank, thank you for your time. Um, your story is a story I think of every resident of Trumbull County has been touched by that. I don't think there's a family in this county that's immune to that. It is, a, it is a problem. It's something that I know I pledge as commissioner, and I think the whole board would agree. To, if it's funding, if it's something, if there's a magic pill out there that we can give to stop this, if there's something we do funding-wise with the sheriff's department, or police entities, or 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 mental health, um, and working with April and her department. I mean, we're all for it. And and you taking the stand up here, representing the face of the people in Trumbull County, is admirable. It's courageous. And if we do anything, and you see that we, you you see a fit where we can enable you to be a leader with that too. By all means, my phone line is always open. Call any of us, and I think unilaterally, that's something that crosses all party lines and all prejudice of any sort, you know, we all understand this problem and you just kind of really open up some eyes today by your bravery. So thank you. So I'd, I'd like to, can I speak to that? Sure, go um, Talk about being a drug dealer but never getting hot. That's my first memory was a drug raid, three years old. So I, I can identify with that. I've got a family member who, who sold and abused and still does. And uh, I know about these problems intimately. And I think that one of the major things that's lacking in Trumbull County is, um, and I'll also let me preface this, and they'll probably mock me for this, but I'm also a licensed social worker. In the first years of my career, I worked in mental health for Birdman Group. And so that's important to me. Often what you see is dual diagnoses, people with substance abuse and mental illness. And we don't have enough facilities to treat 
people like that. That's a priority of mine because I know that once, you know, which, which came first? Are people using the substances in order to self-medicate or are these substances inducing things like um, schizoaffective or schizophrenic type disorders because the, you know, the boost of norepinephrine or something in your brain. So I see these things going on you know, right now, even in my, my own family, and it's, it's difficult. And um, one of the things that are my priorities, I hope we can, we can accomplish that, is making sure that we get to implement the uh, opioid abatement strategy. But there are also other, other drugs and um, other, other ones that are being overprescribed right now. And one of them is uh, given for ADHD, it's Adderall. And they're passing it out like candy at, to people, and there's a national shortage of it right now because uh, the doctor's over-prescribing it. And I've already reached out to my state representatives because of family members with, with these doctors who are you know, cranking them out, kind of like they did with the, the um, op opioid ones. I can't remember, o Oxy and things. They're doing the same thing now with, the, um, with Adderall. And it's scary because I, I mean, I personally would like to see also that they're doing physical evaluations and mental health diet evaluations before prescribing these things to identify differential diagnoses. So someone might present with uh, maybe symptoms of ADHD, but it could be due to having thyroid issues or something. So it's, it's concerning, like I wanna see physical health evaluations, mental health evalu evaluations, before people are prescribed things that they end up getting addicted to because then once they get cut off, that's when they turn to buying things from the street. It, it is a tremendous problem in, in Trumbull County and all over the country, and it's actually the leading, the leading problem that causes homelessness. So. I would just like to say one thing, and I promise I'll keep it brief, but um, you, you are absolutely right. We are not going to arrest our way out of this problem. We thought we could do that years ago. That's not the solution. Um, when Trumbull County, uh, I believe it was six years ago, we, um, a, a prior board with myself, Mr. Fuda, and Mr. Pelka, uh, were one of the first counties to um, take on litigation with uh, opioid addiction, and, and we were able to. Uh, win that lawsuit, barring any appeals and everything like that, but there are going to be millions of dollars funneled back into this community because of the foresight of Mr. Masaki and our board and our board members. So uh, that's going to go to uh, prevention and education, addiction and treatment. And we know one thing about treatment is it's, it, it's not a short-term thing. It can't be. It's not successful over a short-term period. But a long-term treatment means more money, obviously. But that's you know, we're fortunate in Trumbull County because we got some of this money coming back to us. And I think that um, we've already started with our mental health and recovery board and our sheriff's department and, and all of our law enforcement and our courts an abatement strategy that we can, we can implement that's going to try to meet this head on in those three categories. And um, I feel for you, man. I, I mean, I, I, we all, as Denny said, we all, we all have uh, relatives or friends that are fall victim to this and it means not it doesn't matter your socioeconomic status doesn't you know it sees none of that it doesn't see any of that so uh we're, we're committed to to meet that head on and those funds we're going to fight like hell to keep those funds here in trumbull county once we get them and we're going to put them to good use yes. i'm sorry can i since we're on this i need to speak up please i'm sorry sir um i'll be real brief Piggybacking off of what PC is trying to bring for, actually, he, PC is one of the members or one of the attendees that come to see our sanctuary healing arts meeting. We can stand up here all day and talk about the problem and that we've got this money, but what we need is a solution. He says jail is not the answer. He's correct, but jail does keep people alive. So I'm in greens and then going to jail until we can get them into a facility. Uh, in my daughter's case, what kept her alive was jail, and we always worked with her uh, probation officers. She was only in jail long enough until we could get her into a, an extended rehabilitation place. That would be a nice program Trumbull County could bring, where they have one person. I, in my daughter's case, she's fortunate. I was 
uh, hands-on and working in that and very understanding. Um, of course, she didn't steal everything I owned also, so there's that that happens in families. But maybe if Trumbull County can have one advocate or two advocate people who work in between, once uh, an addicted person, I hate to call them addicts and alcoholics because that does not define who they are, so you'll never hear me say that. These are people. And, they, and those are characteristics that they have. It doesn't define them. So people with uh, addiction problems, if they do go to jail and they have a couple advocates that work directly with jail and then a long-term facility, we have an ideal facility planned out for Sierra Sanctuary. We just don't have the funding uh, where they learn, relearn how to live again and learn life skills, mind, body, and soul, not just, which does include faith. But it's not just the Bible, and it's not just uh, talking about an addiction problem. It's like, what are you doing with your free time now? Uh, people who have become addicted are actually the most intelligent people in the world. They spend every second of the day accomplishing their goal, and that's to get their next fix. They are extremely intelligent. They just need to learn how to use, re redirect that time that they've used. But if we could come up with some kind of program, we could have, we could be a, a set of precedents where. Uh, someone works with these people once they do go to jail, but I am in agreement to, uh, and I'm going to tell you why, to sending them to, to jail for this for multiple reasons. One, it gets them off the street and it gets them from bringing it to someone else or bringing it home and their uh, loved ones accidentally touching it and dying. Another one is they are alive while they're in jail. Uh, contrary to the medical stuff that we're hearing, as happens in our jail, that's not true. My daughter spent many years alive because of jail, but she wasn't there very, like she'd spend, you know, the longest I think was three months until we could get her into an extended stay facility. Which, and I'm talking 11 months, not 30 days. 30 days is nothing. It doesn't reprogram your mind. It just keeps your body from now. It, it's, your body is still getting rid of those substances, actually. If you go off coffee for 30 days, you're still trying to get rid of Though that what's in that, let alone these stronger substances. But anyway, uh, maybe if we would, if you all would entertain us meeting with you, and we could set maybe a, a, a small committee that would start working directly with the jails and with the um, probation officers, because the probation officers are very willing to, in lieu of jail, sure. send people to these facilities. They want to see them live. It gives them a purpose for their position. So I, I I apologize. I just since we're talking about it, I didn't mean to. Well, yes, I didn't mean to cut in front of you, but um, I just wanted to get it out. And so uh, maybe uh, we could call you guys this week sure. and try to set something up. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, thank you both. Okay, Mr. Peterson. I just wanted to <clears throat> Roger Peterson, Bloomfield Township. Just wanted to thank you, gentlemen, for the workshop uh, for the public meeting on Monday that we were at for the workshop for the art money. Thank you for walking us through it. Thank you for the discussions. Thank you for Mr. Masaki's help. Thank you for the response to the emails and the text messages. Appreciate it. Um, appreciate the support that you're going to be giving to the Bloomfield Township Project. We've not received uh, any county grant money that I'm aware of for anything like this since 1985. So I just wanted to say thank you and we look forward to hearing from you on the project. And Mara, I'd like to move this one forward to legal absolutely. also. If absolutely. I get a second to do a that. Second, absolutely. So absolutely. we'll move that through Mr. Masaki over to legal and hopefully get an answer for you soon. Thanks. So great presentation again Monday. Thank you. Raymond, if you wanted, it's right here. Anybody else from the public for the good of Trumbull County? Mr. Jang, did you have something you wanted to nope. say with Corlin? Not ready at this time? Uh, maybe Mr. Agler here. Good morning, everyone, and I will keep this brief. Um, you know, I'm the Director of Agriculture for the county. Uh, it's a busy job, in spite of what people might think. Um, but we just recently received a state grant, which I'm really happy for. Uh, and I just want to give a big thank you to everybody involved. You know, it's not about one person in this county. You know, um, it takes everybody working together and, and to make this wagon roll down a road. And, and that's what we have to do. So um, Amy Rear from the Soul and Water Conservation District 
uh, Julie Green from the Planning Commission, uh, not to mention, you know, any less of Sandy O'Brien who brought this to us. Uh, there's been a lot of people involved with this. This grant has taken a year and three months to put together, uh, coming from the state of Ohio. Um, it went a lot of different chambers before it ended up with the Ohio Department of Agriculture, uh, before it ever, you know, it, it's just been a lot of people involved. And I just want to thank everybody for all their help. And these people need to be recognized for what they do. So a uh, big thank you to everybody that's helped to make this. It's just a little grant, but in the scheme of things, it's a big grant that's going to help us do a lot of things. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, nobody else on the floor? Okay, let's go to the uh, phone lines for the good and welfare of Trumbull County, for your good and benefit. You can unmute, unmute your line and state your name. Nobody? You have something? Okay. I'm sorry. I said sorry. Amanda Aether, Warren, Ohio. First of all, the new sound system look, sounds really good. I was on the phone on my way here. Um, more importantly, um, after several conversations with people last week regarding a recent commissioner's ruling and court ruling, um, on Sunday, I decided to make a post to give people the opportunity to voice their opinions in a clear and concise way. The post specifically stated, be polite, hostility helps nothing. We may not be able to change the outcome of this case, but perhaps we can help justice be served for future animal abuse victims. The only names specifically mentioned were commissioners in a summary of case facts. For whatever reason, people I'm not friends with on social media or in real life decided to creep on my post and turn something intended to have a positive impact on future animal cases into a shit show. Um, specifically, um, Brian Flanagan, the union president, who stated, the fact that you created this post to continue to discriminate against a black man in this community is terrible. This post shows you are actually not a compassionate person. Let's also get something straight. Arbitrarily speaking, we could have had Chuck Parks working back at the dog pound. The idea to move him instead of being continually harassed and discriminated against, I'd suggest to let sleeping dogs lie. And continues with, the situation with Mr. Parks is personal and political. I for one believe the way you're treating him that you would have no problem executing him. I also believe you are inhumane with your actions. First of all, I don't discriminate. I spoke publicly about situations involving people of authority, white people of authority in Lodi, California, and Euclid, Ohio. And the only father my blonde haired blue eyed child has ever known is a tall, dark skinned black man. Secondly, I don't even believe in the death penalty. Third of all, why is it okay for a county employee, let alone the union president, to intentionally search for my post and make such egregious accusations during work hours against a private citizen of the county. I live in the county. I do not work for the county. Thank you. I would say if, the, if that, I haven't seen the post. I'm just I have the screenshots if you want okay. to see them. It's reprehensible that, that uh, you know, I think the, the actions of the individual speak for themselves, unfortunately. And that post should be removed if it hasn't been already. Um, because it's making some wild accusations that just aren't there. And I apologize. Uh, I guess I'll, I'll make a quick little statement on it too. I get, I get a little heat after last week um, from some of the uh, animal crowd, of which I consider myself one of them, uh, on why didn't you vote with Mario to fire the guy? The vote that we had at the last meeting was not whether to fire him or to not fire him, it was whether to agree to the union settled grievance or the union settled uh, agreement for him to move to a different department. Uh, I, when I took over here as commissioner, this has already gone on from six months before I got here. And I felt the way it was handled in those six months from the board of commissioners all the way through HR, um, that a lot of it was bungled. 
and and the gentleman deserved a second chance based on that for the mistakes by the previous board as far as how long they kept him on unpaid leave and lack of communication back and forth. There should have been something settled back then. If I'd have been commissioner back at the time, and the facts are as I see they are now, yeah, I would have voted with Mar to fire the guy. But and I would vote to fire any employee that disrespects, disregards the safety, the feeding, the care of any animals. Uh, I'll do that in a heartbeat. So my vote was not reflective on my opinion of the facts of the case. It was my vote as to move him away from the dog kennel so there was zero chance he would get a chance in a grievance to go back to that job. And that was the, the avenue that I felt was the most responsible as commissioner to take at that time for the benefit of the public and the benefit of the animals there. So that's why I voted the way that I did, um, to move him away from there. So don't let that be uh, a weakness thing in the future that, you know, that I'm against animals in any way, shape, or form, or I'm against that. It just wasn't my place to come in, Johnny, come lately, seven months after the fact, and make a ruling on something I wasn't privy to in the beginning, and I felt um, the process, he kind of earned a little bit of a pass because of the way the process was handled by the previous board. I'd like to speak to that also. Uh, back last year, when the person was put on leave, it was done contrary to the revised code. Administrative leave has to be done uh, if it's unpaid, only if it's a felony. The board of commissioners, not including myself, violated the Ohio Revised Code. They also violated the union contract by putting someone on unpaid leave twice for the same thing. That's also a problem. Because of the mistakes that the board made, it put him in a position where we were about to go to agreements or uh, binding arbitration. Going to binding arbitration costs tens of thousands of dollars. We would have lost. There's no doubt in my mind because when you make mistakes that are contrary to the collective bargaining agreement and to the law that governs how we place people on leave, we, we, there's no chance of us succeeding through that. And so he would have not only been put back to his job, uh, but also been given interest because the law states that someone unlawfully put on that leave, on, on leave, you know, that they should have interest too. So we acted, I believe, in the most appropriate fashion to protect the board against a losing arbitration. I respectfully disagree. so that next time, if there's another situation, and you can go to my page and look at the post, my everything I post is public, um, it's so that we can do better next time. This is done, let's try and do better next time. Let's submit this to the commissioners, to the courts, to anyone that will hear it so that we can do better next time. And, let, and let's hope there isn't a next time in this situation. Well, uh, <laughs> well on the other end, there will always be a next time. We, we've made leaps and bounds, and I've said this many times, but in that dog pound, and now we're looking for a new facility. We can't go backwards. That's not what we want to do. And, and putting this person back over there would have been going backwards. So we went from, you know, a very uh, deplorable place to a place that's basically a zero kill uh, pound. And we want to continue on that to treat animals the way they should be treated, the, the dogs as they should be treated. And, um, you know, hopefully, like you said, this is a step where we can move forward. Um, and it's a wake-up call to everybody that goes in that pound that, you know, it's not going to be tolerated. So. I did want to speak to the comment that you said. I, I believe in the First Amendment, but I also believe in following our rules. And the, But there's nothing in our, in our rules. Uh, actually, if an employee makes a comment and they're a classified or union employee that says something that, or does something that's politically motivated or based on a partisan political activity, that's not allowed, that's actually a misdemeanor. But for someone to give their opinion about what happened is absolutely within his rights, even as a county employee. So I, I, I protect those rights, I respect the, the right to freedom of speech. And so whether or not he said something that um, you, disagreed with, I just have to say that, that that's permissible. And I, I respect that right as long as it's not contrary to uh, the revised code as it relates to 
classified employees participating in partisan political activity. Well, I hope that goes for all employees, then, because there's been employees that have been maligned for their First Amendment rights and, and speaking out uh, about different things, and you've not taken that same stance. Okay. So if anything, we have to be very consistent in applying this. Yes, and so I, I'm happy you brought that up. We have a lot of employees that are classified employees who are participating in partisan political activities, running social media sites. They have First Amendment rights. No, but they're Is that partisan? partisan. Yes, partisan political activities. Say they're working to get an actual Democrat or Republican employee elected, they can't do that. Say they're working to get a Republican or Democrat, um, I'm sorry, candidate elected or candidate removed, that's partisan. If it's a nonpartisan issue, it's different and it doesn't, it doesn't violate the my, law. My that, point so, is. But, but what we have is employees actually, you know, and it was led by the HR department last time too, with under, under Richard Jackson and having some of our commissioner's office staff participating in those activities, but um, it, it was- The more. only one partaking in those activities was you online. That, no. was, that was demeaning office staff, that was demeaning colleagues, that was demeaning other oh, elected officials. You're talking, no, no, no. No, 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 that's, I, that's the are truth. You and if you want, and if you want, talk, I, and if you want to, can order, I please finish? No, no, if can you're gonna I please talk finish? If, it, if it's can outside of what our, our, we're allowed to speak. I let you finish all the time. You know, I'm not, not I, I have finish. to make that's sure. Fine. I have to make Just sure for the that record, I, she would let the, me finish. Yes, for the record, I'm objecting to any comments made by Commissioner fine, Cantil Mesa. It doesn't you should reflect, allow me to speak. It my doesn't First reflect, Amendment It rights. doesn't reflect You just mine. talked about First I'm Amendment sorry, rights. we have litigation and we have to abide by what we're allowed to discuss and what I'm we're not I'm not talking about discuss. anything with the litigation. I heard what you said. It's fact. Okay. You'll look it up on your page. Okay. With that, I'll... Entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Mr. Cantil Mesa? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Ms. French Co? Yes. Is that the letter? Uh, yeah, these are two Design. letters of support for the agenda items you already approved. Did you? It wasn't modified since yesterday, right? No, that should that should be the one that uh, that's for the Matthews School relocation. Yes, that's what we got that yesterday. That should be exactly. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Excuse me. What was your comment? I'm sorry. I just wanted to thank you. Oh, no, what was your, I didn't hear what you said. Was there something? I just want to thank you, commissioners. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you. 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 Or not chair. Yeah. Building for animal body. Yeah, his historic preservation is really to the tourism, I believe well, in that. My mother in law is the one that used to keep the museum open. But she's always too able. So unfortunately it's falling kinda of like on us younger ones. But it's something that's important in my life. <laughs>